Next day, Records Tower. Agent Mouse, reporting for patrol duty of the Records Tower. Naruto greeted his temporary commanding officer, Lizard, looking straight ahead into the dimly lit office. Lizard glanced at him and the papers Naruto handed him. So you're the brat dragon promised me for the week. What did you do to get dumped down here? Lizard drawled. It was obvious he was bored the talk of HQ was that ten years ago the man was one of the top ANBU one of the division captains. But then he received a debilitating injury, ensuring he'd never be an active shinobi again. Problem was, he knew too many secrets and a lot of higher-ups wondered if letting him go would put the security of the village at risk. The council debated for days about having him killed, half-hearted, of course, but they were ninjas, or to just trust the man to never give out secrets or be kidnapped by another village for said secrets. The compromise? Captain Lizard became the bookkeeper, the man who knew every single grain of dirt on Kanoha. He never had any family or real hobbies before, so he lived inside the complex, among the shadows of Kanoha's darker side. Nothing sir I just needed the extra money for intermediate sealing lessons as an orphan any extra skills I want to learn I need to pay for. Oh? Sealing is an obscure art why would an ANBU wish to learn more than the basics? Lizard knew who Naruto was heck, he was one of the ANBU that found Naruto laying next to Kushina's corpse and all of Naruto's records were kept in the basement. Dragon had suggested Naruto be given access to that level, about damn time in Lizard's humble opinion, but Naruto wouldn't know about his heritage until after he found the records unless someone introduced him to the art? My captain recommended it and I am picking it up at a relatively quick pace I am almost finished with level 2, but the barrier between level 2 and 3 makes learning without a tutor unwise. I already littered our training ground with enough potholes. But why would you waste your money on more lessons? The basics are more than enough for an ANBU squad and I don't hear any desire to join the Barrier Corps. The reason the boy wanted to know more was obviously because sealing was in the Uzumaki blood, but that didn't mean Lizard couldn't mess with the brat his day was monotonous and picking on youngsters always made his day brighter. Um? I guess I just like it? Naruto couldn't really explain it sealing was just enjoyable, even when his shock tags kept exploding. Lizard seemed to be unimpressed. Why not learn a more applicable skill? Naruto seemed to stiffen at this and Lizard smirked. Degrade in Uzumaki's ceiling and they lost it. He prepared for a heated rant or passionate demonstration. Every Uzumaki he ever met did it. Hyunjutsu would be valuable to the core if I can attain level 5 or higher, as then I would be qualified to maintain the security barrier and seals at HQ, thus cutting out the middleman and internalizing more of ANBU's procedures. Except this one. Lizard frowned, he should have known that Killjoy Tenzo would feed the duty crap to his young charge. What Lizard didn't know was that Naruto, like any true Uzumaki, did in fact have a don't mock the seals rant prepared. But, like any good ANBU, one that was deathly afraid of their captain and other superior officers, Naruto bit his tongue and went down the path of not being punished for insubordination. T.S.C.H. You're the only boring one I've met. Now get out of here Trout is waiting for you on B5 for your shift. Lizard waved Naruto away. Naruto bowed and left, confused at the last statement. The only boring one I've met? Most ANBU are boring though. He pushed those thoughts aside as he reached floor B5. A brown-haired ANBU waits, his trot mask almost ghoulish in the fluorescent light. Agent Mouse I am your commanding officer for the week, you can call me Captain Trout. It is an honor to work with you, Captain. Naruto's heart raced so close was he to finding out about his past. Respect good for one so young. Which squad do you come from? Team Row, Captain. Mm, that explains it, Tenzo's team? Next time you see him remind that idiot he owes me 600 Rio, okay? Trout says offhandedly, like he really didn't care that Naruto's captain owed him so much money. Oh, of course, sir. Best to go with the neutral route. Good, my little Kohai. He pats Naruto on the head much to the blonde's hidden ire. 
Follow me, I'll teach you the ropes today and tomorrow you'll be assigned a sector to watch over. And with that, Naruto learned the ins and out of Kanoha's house of secrets. That evening, Naruto trekked to Anko's playground, the forest of death, for his first poisons lesson, mainly how to properly gather the needed herbs and storing them to prevent spoilage long term. Gliding over the rooftops Naruto focused on the small notebook in his hands, where he was carefully mapping out his plan for the rest of the week. From his time with Captain Trout, he had deduced that each ANBU was given half a floor to patrol and report any trouble in, as well as sweep slash dust to keep the files clean, though Trout said the mice were an ongoing problem to not bother with. Naruto figured that he would focus on his actual job while pairs of clones transformed into mice would work their way down, from the least restricted section to the darkest village secrets files. Naruto wasn't stupid reading his file could be excused, but digging into other files would result in having the QB extracted and put into another child in other words, execution. So, the clones had orders to only open the boxes labeled Naruto Uzumaki, Kushina Uzumaki, and October 10th. Anything else was off-limits. He could only hope that saved him if anyone ever figured out what he was doing. Arriving outside the tall, seal-enforced fence, because no way would Kanoma have a simple playground-grade fence to keep out the tigers, leeches, and whatever other mythical beasts that lived there, he flared his chakra and waited for Anko. He had to spend hours every week with his squad in the hellhole no way would he go in there alone. Hey, Mouse-chan. Welcome to paradise. Anko's exuberant greeting came from behind him and a kunai was at his jugular. Naruto flinched despite himself. Big mistake. Oh ho, I can smell your fear. I like it almost as much as I love your blood. A cut appears above his mask Anko licks the liquid off of her kunai. I paid your dango tab for help with poisons, not seduction lessons. Naruto said. Anko sniggered but released him. Ah, is little mouse afraid of the big bad snake? Well anyway, let's go the best species of poppy seeds and sleeping herbs are just up ahead. Anko jumped over the fence without a glance back and after an eye roll Naruto followed. Over the following three hours Naruto learned the ingredients for not just the sleeping drug, but also a paralyzing one Anko insisted and found that the problem was what part of the plant he was gathering from the top leaves led to death if not treated, while the flowers on the ground of the plant just sedated the victim. Now, Mausachan, it's time for your immunity training. Anko said happily. Naruto paled and backed away. No, no, that's okay. I have patrol tomorrow anyway. He tried to reason, but Anko's grin turned viscous. And I know that shift isn't for 16 hour the dose I'm giving will knock you out for 8 the first time. She sticks him with a sunbon as he attempts flight. Don't worry before the week is up you'll be immune to three times that amount. Her cackle was Naruto's last remembrance of lucidity. Last day of patrol. Naruto Uzumaki born October 10th to Kushina Uzumaki and Minato Namikaze. Naruto sucked in a breath at that last name the fourth Hokage was his father. He, the village scapegoat, was the son of their greatest hero. Oh, the irony. Blinking away tears the young ANBU reads on through the thick box that told him the truth, from his birth to the decision to enlist him in ANBU. This mess of emotions all started when Naruto's clone on his floor, ironically, discovered the file box Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze. The clone was confused over if reading it was allowed the name Namikaze meant somehow Naruto was linked to the man who sealed the QB, but was it just notes over the seal? And if it was something else, what was it? Dispelling its partner the clone waited patiently, and when its creator arrived in a measured step at two dispelled, leaving the identity searching boy to himself. Within an hour Naruto was livid he had a godfather, the Sanin, Jiraiya, who had refused to see or have anything to do with him. In Jiraiya's notes to the Hokage, Naruto reminded him too much of a broken past, and he trusted his sensei to raise the boy as his own. Problem was, the council declared Naruto a military asset at the age of two, meaning no one could adopt him not even an old student of his father, Kakashi, or his father's old guard members that explained Ganma offering Senban lessons for free. 
It was ridiculous from what Naruto read within the file, he was deemed too valuable to be entrusted to one person or clan, but the report showed that Jinchuriki needed to be filled with love in their lives to keep them loyal. That led to the Hokage befriending him at a young age, the notes from that section mentioned it was originally to build loyalty to the Hokage, but bloomed into actual like of Naruto, and Naruto entering the academy early at the age of six in the hopes of early graduation. His real academy scores had been added, and the investigation that followed, leading to three teachers being fired and two being dropped from active duty. Naruto felt a vindictive pleasure at that, but it turned to bitterness, as he recalled all the times Naruto would swear up and down that he did hit the target and get a 10 out of 10, or that his math test wasn't an F, only to have his GG ignore him or tell him to just show them kindness when he cried that the Taijutsu instructors hit him harder than the others. A subtle sabotage swept under the rug, as the official reports just fabricated the need for a new staff or minor infractions that built up for the reason that the teachers were fired. The only good part of his findings was a picture of his parents and him in the belly, but they were still together. Carefully, Naruto sealed the picture inside a scroll and placed the box back exactly the way it was before. He wiped his tears, knowing that no matter how much he wanted to, he couldn't storm into the Hokage's office and demand answers, or track down his godfather to beat him up, or even yell at Kakashi, who was his father's prized student. He had to make a believable reason to how he figured it out as it was clear nobody wanted him to know their reasons, according to the last report from a month ago was IWA and Kumo coming after him. But Naruto read the real reason that was spelled out among the good intentions, his stability and loyalty weren't unshakable now, and until he proved to be properly stable and loyal to Kanoha and the Hokage he was to be kept in the dark despite his maturity and rank. Naruto considered waiting until the Hokage made the first move towards reconciliation. Is my pride worth it? He wondered, and came up with the obvious no. His stupid stubbornness was not worth hindering both his career or his knowledge. Time began to mend the fence, he decided. After he was officially in the know of his past he'd have plenty of time to beat the crap out of his former Gigi. Besides, he did miss the man, despite everything. Okage's office, after shift. Naruto breathed deeply before knocking. Come in. The familiar aged voice spoke. Naruto opened the door hesitantly. Ah, Naruto my boy. Do you need anything? Sarutobi was guarded, but hopeful. Naruto only showed up in his presence for the guard rotation and that one mission report both had been awkward, as Sarutobi knew the boy was hiding his bitterness. It was the only reason he kept Naruto's legacy a secret from him, despite his commander's rather vocal protests. A Jinchuriki that wasn't all the way trusting of its Hokage couldn't be given more reasons to be angry. Once Naruto forgave him and calmed down he'd take him aside and explain why it was for his own good Kumo and IWA were large threats and that his godfather was always out protecting the village from spies. Even if it was partially bull crap, the reasoning was sound and believable. Please forgive me Naruto. Perhaps some bonding time would work? On the matter of letting Naruto decide Saratobi was waiting for Naruto make the first move maybe he should just bite the kunai and do it himself. He wasn't just worried for his position, though a few sharks had started circling when they figured out he and the village Jinchuriki weren't as chummy as before Naruto had become a second grandson to him, and he'd be damned if he let the boy stay sullen. Oh. I was just wondering. Would you like to go get some ramen? If you're not busy, I mean. Naruto turned away to hide his slight blush. The ANBU posted Gamma Squad, according to the roster, breathed a sigh of relief. Many ANBU were tired of their new Kohai and their esteemed leader not speaking to each other. Most quietly agreed the Hokage should have made the effort first, but were proud Naruto took the initiative, demonstrating loyalty and honor. Of course. Let me grab my wallet, my treat, all you can eat? He smiled in amusement when Naruto lit up at the offer and nodded. Thank you, Hokage-sama, Naruto blurted out. He may have to bite down his pride and let his anger go mostly, at least dash, but he would never call in Gigi again both for the principal and to escape his captain's wrath. You don't have to be so formal, Naruto, even though you're my ANBU, 
Outside of duty we can be familiar with one another, the Hokage bit out painfully. The man wanted Naruto to be like he used to be, minus the extreme loudness. I can't, Hokage-sama, Sarutobi raised his eyebrow at this. Oh? And why not? All the ANBU, Naruto included, grew cold, and Captain Hawk answers. He's on Rotenzo's squad, he said like that, answered everything. All the ANBU nodded along, but Saratobi was still confused. Why would it matter to be on Tenzo's squad? He's formal, but what does that matter to Naruto? If he found out I didn't show you proper respect and he always finds out then all my ramen would be burned and I'd spend a week being chased by leeches and wood spikes, Naruto shivered. Tenzo made it obvious that calling superiors by nicknames would be unwise. Just ask Hikaru what happened when he called the Jonin commander Pinapple-sama during a debriefing last year. I see Saratobi said, understanding completely a captain could punish their subordinates for breaking of any rules and technically, it was against the rules to refer to those in the higher echelons without proper titles. Minutes later the Hokage, Naruto, and the other ANBU were sitting in Ichiraka's waiting for the heavenly broth, the squad being rewarded for stopping Kanoamaru from bothering the Hokage all day. So, Brat, what have you been up to on your week off? Raven asked. Squad Gamma consisted of Hawk, Raven, Elk, and Lemur, and were oftentimes teamed up with Ro for duty and group practice, making them familiar enough with Naruto's schedule. I took the record's rotation boring, but the paycheck was worth it, Naruto said after eating six bowels. At this they not a week of record's rotation did pay nicely but very few did it willingly as it was even worse punishment than watching Kanoamaru Saratobi at the academy. An Anko taught me two poisons a sedative and a paralyzer as well as beginner resistance to them. Most of the common ingredients for poisons were free for the taking in the forest of death or surrounding areas, but gathering said ingredients and mixing them properly was too difficult without instruction, even with a guidebook allowing suppliers to overcharge shinobi. Hawk thought for a moment before speaking. Say, Naruto. Would you be willing to teach me those two poisons? My squad does a fair amount of retrieval and prisoner escorts the pre-made ones always bankrupt us. Saratobi frowned slightly at this obvious hardship to his shinobi as he listened, but didn't interrupt, wanting to see how Naruto interacted with his comrades. Sure if you teach me two of those advanced trapping knots. Naruto wasn't running a charity, and the two he was talking about were perfect for anchoring wire or rope in high-speed wind conditions, and seeing as Naruto had a wind element or could travel to the land of wind, it was needed, but still be able to be activated with a touch of chakra to the lead string. Problem was, almost no one was adept at those knots and the book that contained this knowledge was pricey. But Hawk was the second best trapper in active ANBU Naruto was sixth already according to the leaderboards and thus could do them in his sleep. Deal Hawk said immediately. Kakashi won't be back from his mission by tomorrow, we can start the lessons then? Naruto smirked and they shook hands, both drooling at the prospect of new abilities. Of course, even with those knots you'll still be years behind me, Hawk added, and Naruto sculled slightly. I am pleased to see my ANBU squad's work to make each other stronger to protect Kanova, Sarutobi chuckled. Naruto gave a real grin from behind his face mask and dug into his tenth miso ramen with gusto. For the next hour Naruto joked around and reconnected with the Hokage, the ANBU giving them space after eating their share. Tucci and Iam stole glances at the two, but withheld themselves from conversation to allow the much-needed bonding time to flourish. Two days later and Naruto was back for Ro's first practice in almost a week, his wallet stuffed and a weight off his shoulders well, almost. He didn't trust his Kage on a personal level anymore. He'd die for him, defend his decisions for the village, and kill for him. Trust him to tell him the truth? Hell no. The last few months had allowed Naruto to come to the conclusion that while, well, despite everything, he didn't hate Haruzen Sarutobi and could rationalize his choices for the sake of the village didn't mean the man wasn't going to incur his wrath later dash, the Hokage seat was most definitely not for him, and that he personally hated what the position made someone become. His dream of protecting his precious people and getting a ninja cat was noble enough for him, thank you very much. I'm glad we're all here I take it you two were productive? 
Tenzo asked, the ghoul face he was known for shining despite it being daylight. I did records rotation, learned two poisons paralyzing and sedative to save our team budget, and my clones can almost make a dent into the waterfall Naruto reported. Yugao ruffled his hair. That's great, Mouse. Those two will indeed save our wallets. I think you deserve some of my homemade brownies everyone else paled at that, Yugo was just as deadly with the kitchen as she was with the sword. Naruto smiled weakly. Of course, senpai. I'd love some of your brownies to dump in the garbage. I lounged around for the week and regret nothing Hikaru said bluntly. Tenzo rubbed the bridge of his nose. Hikaru was normally a hard worker, but at times he resembled either a Nara or a hyperactive toddler. Well, Wolf, I'm truly glad you relaxed the whole time Tenzo said sounding the opposite. Today we'll be working on combination attacks and underground battle maneuvers as I noticed on my mission that most can't fight effectively in cramped passageways where Jutsu is unwise and many formations have to be altered. To fix that we'll be learning them today and then taking the sewer shift to practice. Naruto bit back a groan, the sewers had to be combed through every month to check for any activity or traces of intruders. Rarely did a captain request that particular job, and never was it done for training. Oh, and Wolf? Tenzo smiled placidly. Yes, Captain? I took the liberty of putting you in the corner for the next five office rotations I hope you don't mind the extra training? Not at all, Captain. I live for it, Wolf replied dryly. Perhaps he should have lied and said he read the beginner medical scrolls he bought. No, the man has eyes everywhere. Three Tuesdays later, bi-monthly gambling night. Civilians and lower-ranked ninja unwind away from their teammates after spending hours of every day with each other. It was common for shinobi and civilians in some cases to lead two groups of friendship, the on-duty one where ninja would die for their teammates, and the off-duty acquaintances that never became more than skin-deep. Once one reached Jonin level, however, they realized sticking with those you would take a kunai for made for a much more relaxing downtime. Many Jonin associated with only other Jonin, ANBU, and the few up-and-coming Chunin. It allowed them to vent about the scumbags on their last A-rank seduction mission or whine about the Hokage assigning a squad too many assassination missions in a month, causing the squad to contemplate whining like Jonin for something new. It was this comradeship that kept each one sane and voluntarily hanging out with their teams away from work more times than not. This was the scene ANBU Squad Row was participating in with others of their station. Naruto stared at his target with calculating eyes, who stared back at him through the dragon mask. Neither would give away anything with their faces, a true test of Naruto's luck was about to happen. He planned to clean his commander out, after catching him red-handed swiping his ramen and placing fresh vegetables in their spot. Pranking was forbidden and unwise as dragons seemed to have a Naruto sense but humiliation at the bimonthly poker game? That, he could do. That, and if the gossip was right, his winnings would let him barter for something useful later. Something wrong, mouse? Dragon asked coolly, hiding his mirth. Stealing Naruto's ramen after every shopping trip proved to be an excellent workout in avoiding traps. Now he could clean the boy out of his savings, and thus making him reliant on the approved supplies Dragon dropped off. It was foolproof. Too bad he never heard of Naruto's Uzumaki luck, and the other ANBU and Jonin hid their knowledge of the fact well. Even the Hokage had to hide his eagerness at Dragon getting his ass handed to him. The man had foolishly bet an eight-year-old Naruto he couldn't infiltrate T and I and swipe Ibiki's favorite torture chain. Two days later a dusty and tired Naruto set said chain on Saratobi's paperwork and walked out while cackling. He learned his lesson. No, of course not Dragon-sama. Let's have some fun. Naruto smiled brightly, the cloth mask concealing its morphing into a smirk. Thirty hands later and Naruto was the proud owner of Dragon's most prized belonging, his limited edition collection of Aika Aika, all forty volumes. They had bet their most treasured objects after Dragon lost all his on-hand money and A-rank missions worth and Dragon accepted, 
thinking his hand was good enough and he'd win both his money back and whatever was sealed in the scroll Naruto carried around for the past several weeks he suspected it was something from Naruto's file, and he couldn't let him keep it for his own security. I give up Dragon finally said, the pain evident in his voice. Nobody moved as he got up and left the room, too prideful to attempt a trade back. Three seconds passed before the room erupted. Yes. That's my chibi kohai. The only ANBU to beat Dragon at anything. That's right, bitches, Team Row rules. Hikaru boasted to the room, which everyone ignored. Naruto escaped the headlock Hikaru tried with practiced ease. Hmm, Aika Aika? Looks boring Naruto said innocently as he flipped through it, pretending to not notice the spike of killing intent from Yugao and surprisingly Tenzo that died down as he threw them in a pile. Kakashi and Sarutobi gasped. If you do not wish to honor the sacredness that is Aika Aika Empire I would gladly take it off your hands, my cute little student Kakashi said way too cheerfully. Sarutobi snarled at his subordinate for trying to steal his precious. Don't be silly, Kakashi, Naruto knows I would be the best choice to guard such a precious supply. The two men glared at each other. Sarutobi prepped to summon Enma while Kakashi inched his headband up. Everyone else in the room sweat dropped, and Hei 8 prepared to play the part of Proctor if need be. Naruto, however, wasn't going to let that happen. I might be willing to trade for them. What do you have? Naruto asked, in full bartering mode. At this point the Jonin were slightly shocked at the prospect of a twelve-year-old trading the smut for something while the few ANBU just shook their heads. Naruto had started getting a reputation of trading other members for training, whether it be survival lessons or tactics or the occasional jutsu. Team Gama was a prime example as Hawk and Naruto had an ongoing account. Kakashi knew the drill and put his best deal forward. Give me those precious and I'll teach you both a D-rank jutsu for water, fire, earth, and lightning and buy you a chakra conductive chukoto. I know you've been eyeing one and that you wouldn't be able to afford it until after the exams, even with the pocket change there. Most in the room believed Naruto would agree instantly which he would have except the Hokage whom he was back on civil terms with interjected. Naruto, my surrogate grandson. Give me those books and not only will I double Kakashi's offer but, I will tell you your parents' identities the room stiffened Naruto's lineage wasn't hard to pinpoint, heck he looked like a clone of his father and now began to act like him too since Tenzo gained command of him. Oh, you mean Minato Namakes and Kushina Uzumaki? Naruto said with a cocky smirk. Sarutobi and Kakashi face faulted while the others either broke out laughing or gaped. H how did you know? My mother's name is on the memorial stone, Hokage-sama, and as for my dad he paused for dramatic effect. I didn't until you confirmed it. Naruto lied, covering up his borderline illegal searches. Sarutobi went bug-eyed at this, falling for it completely. To be honest, the Hokage was just using this obsessive bartering to tell Naruto his parents' identity. Kakashi knew, the other room members knew, and Naruto knew the Hokage had been chickening out from having a private heart to heart on the matter. It was the only reason Naruto didn't go nuts on the man for his little ploy. Kakashi chuckled, remembering another blonde who had a flair for making higher ups tell him what he wanted to know without lifting a finger. But you know, Hokage sama, I'll accept Kakashi senpai's deal and you'll still be giving me everything you offered minus the information. Why would I do that? Saratobi demanded, miffed at being outmaneuvered, and still peeved at himself for not being able to work himself up to have a private conversation with Naruto. Naruto inspected his nails. Oh, just because if you do I'll train you in the art of defeating paperwork. He pulled out his trump card, which he would have used soon to discover his parents' identities soon enough anyway, now it could be put towards more training. Sarutobi was at his side, bowing down. Please, teach me, Naruto-sensei. Very well, my young grasshopper, shadow clones. Now you can train me after the chunin exams. Kakashi-senpai I'll see you Sunday where we can learn a jutsu or two a week. I'll have the ANBU supply store put my weapons on your tab now I can have a backup Chukoto. 
Oh, and don't worry, I forgive you I will be pranking you non-stop after the Chunin exams, but I forgive you, as long as tomorrow I can talk to you privately about it. I have early office guarding, so Jianyi. And he shunshined away before anyone could get a word in. Five minutes later Sarutobi smiles gently and then chuckles. He wants to talk tomorrow. And he forgave me. Maybe there is hope for me yet, even if I will have to go through his vindictive side of pranks first. Excuse me, I have paperwork to give to clones. And the god of shinobi follows his surrogate grandson's example, leaving behind a stunned crowd. Does anyone else feel inferior to the twelve year we could all beat into next week with our hands tied behind our back? Gemma manages after a moment. Absolutely was the unanimous reply. Hikaru felt the need to soothe their prides a tiny bit. If it makes you feel any better we'd have to fight him with only one hand restrained he graduated from no hands last week. He joked. Somehow that made them feel worse. Naruto's apartment. Naruto lay awake, giddy but saddened by the night. On one hand he not only confirmed his parents' identities and set up the basis for any revenge pranks, but he got eight new jutsu in the making being a jinchuriki had the perk of having enough chakra to perform a variety of jutsu from every element even those opposite in nature. On the other hand, he had expected a different scenario for his heritage reveal something more heartfelt? At least he had a meeting tomorrow to talk to the Hokage about it in private. The last few months had been the highlight of Naruto's life. No one looked down on him except some older ANBU from the other squads but Dragon put that to rest quickly during the first inter-squad training day. Tenzo told him last week how they were ordered to steer Naruto away from the village's eye while on the three-month grace period. Team Ro all looked guilty at that and believes Naruto would hold a grudge over it he didn't. In fact, Naruto only snuck away to Ichiraku's occasionally now, much to Dragon's ire, who for some reason detested his habit. Otherwise, he shopped, ate, and hung out at the upper-level shinobi-only establishments, becoming a part of the older generation of shinobi's circle, realizing it was overall better than his life before with civilians and younger shinobi. Many hardly gave him a second glance now after Hikaru had paraded Naruto around the hotspots two weeks after his enlistment. His life was just beginning to settle before tonight happened. Knock. Knock. Naruto. I know you're up. I'm coming in. Kakashi's muffled voice grows distinct as he works his way to Naruto's bedroom. Entering quietly the copy ninja takes in the slightly messy room and quarter-filled bookcase. On it were novels on everything from chakra control to a few comics. There was even a lone cookbook for Shinobi. I see you took up reading? He asked, a bit surprised. Naruto wasn't exactly the most studious ninja based on his academy records. For his part Naruto blared, and in the moonlight it was terrifying to see those ice-blue eyes almost glow. I always liked to read, senpai, I just never had enough money to afford more than a couple before the yearly break-in on my birthday would destroy them. My academy grades were falsified I made A's and B's on every test for the last two years, but Mizuki graded for Irika. What went unsaid was him changing the papers out, and Kakashi winced at his own stupidity. It's okay, I know it will take years before people see me as more than a failure, and my prankster reputation didn't help things. Ha, you do have a larger vocabulary now than a few months ago, Kakashi commented. Naruto smiled slightly. Yeah, well that's Captain Tenzo he doesn't tolerate row members being unrefined in speech so he assigns vocabulary work. And, am I the only one that can viably see Tenzo's personality making him a speech Nazi? I feel the only reason he didn't beat manners and respect into Naruto was for plot continuity on Kishi's part, not that Hikaru does it. Both chuckle at the abnormal Hyuga and his ability to cause Tenzo headaches. The room then falls to an uncomfortable silence, and Naruto fidgets. Is there something you need or do you just like breaking into your neighbor's homes in the middle of the night? Kakashi sputtered. And no. I came here, to talk. Your father was my sensei, and that's why I started teaching you, though now I do it because you are my favorite student, more so than my idiot team. It was true too, Kakashi often grumbled about the said three idiots at dinner. 
Oh. Did they, did they love me? Naruto looked up with glistening eyes, asking the question he had wanted to ask for years but could never muster the courage to the record's discovery made him even more curious. Kakashi scoffed. Love you? They adored you. In fact, when Sensei heard that Kushina was pregnant he fainted before using Hiroshin to announce it to all his close friends. There was one time. And stories passed by Kakashi's lips like a dam being released. Both shinobi found solace and closure with each word uttered until they found themselves clutching their sides from the great ramen chase that resulted in Minato proposing to Kushina at Ichiraku's. Ha ha! My dad knew how to pick them and conversation stopped as Kakashi's ANBU tattoo pulsed with Naruto's. Village infiltrated. Eight alive perpetrators attempted assassination of Hokage. Failed, but the survivors on the run. All active squads plan Delta. Retired and reserve report to Hokage Tower. Naruto's blood chilled even as he unsealed his spare uniform and mask. After months of drills and mornings with Guy he was dressed in 30 seconds. Without a word Naruto leaps through his window and towards the Inazuka compound, Kakashi going the opposite direction to meet the reserve captains. Naruto lands in the meeting spot along with two other agents, an Aburain and Hikaru. Wolf, lemur he saluted. Without a word the three turned their attention to Tsum Inazuka, the ANBU's top search and retriever even in her middle age. Naruto was often included in the division's simulations because of his clones and as such some knew his abilities. Listen up! She barked eight ninjas wearing scratched headbands of Kiri escaped through the eastern forest after a failed ambush of Hokage-sama on his way home after a stroll, his guards were knocked unconscious. We managed to kill ten of them so these eight are the stragglers. Everyone, to your assigned teams for this, mouse, 200 clones three for each team and the rest as pursuers. Naruto complied, and 200 puffs later the ANBU were off with the clones to pursue. Naruto sat down next to Hana, Sum's daughter, who was on medical leave and had a headset connected to each captain. Meditating, Naruto waited for a clone to dispel with information, which he would then tell Hana to relay to the captains, as the radios couldn't handle it if everyone was talking at once not to mention they were ridiculously expensive dash, and the tattoos couldn't go as fast, and were used as a mass call mostly. Less than twenty minutes pass before a rush of memories hits Naruto. Hana! Five clicks northeast blue squad, clone found the trail headed towards rice. Hannah spoke rapidly into her mic and the ANBU began making their way towards blue squad. Good work mouse, shit, they found five, but the last three are missing. She curses before a kunai embeds into Naruto's shoulder. Hannah grabs his collar and yanks him through the air to avoid an explosive note. A ninja with a slashed kiri headband lands opposite of them holding an unconscious and beaten Sasuke Uchiha. The other two at his side stepped forward, ready for a fight. I think we found the missing three, Naruto commented, dryly. Hannah glared. No dip, mutt. These three smell at least Chunin level two. Damn, the whole clan and ANBU are out, and my Ninkin joined in. Their backup at the tower was on their way but still six minutes out and the non-tracker ANBU were sweeping other, further away places of interest for sabotage or stragglers. We just have to hold them for six minutes, I'm sure we can do it. Here is what I think will work, Captain taught me this strategy during Shogi Naruto whispered. Hannah looked unsure as the insane idea based solely on assumptions and hoping was laid out in a matter of seconds. But, she told her rational side of her brain, they either went through with it or the two forming seals in front of her would kill them. As the two in front created a mist, Hana Kawarimi's with a Naruto clone on the rooftop, who is henched to look like her. She waits for the opening they'd have one shot to take them out. A little ANBU wants to play, eh? Coo coo coo. What point should I take? Heart, Larinax? So young and brave, too bad you have to die. The taller of the three cackles and his footsteps echo. For Naruto clones holding kunai search around the mist using scent and sound not that it helped, and three are taken out quickly.
the real Naruto ducks under a katana intent on lopping off his head with enough force to cut a wall. In the process Naruto nicks him with his own kunai in the leg. He smirks and does the one thing Tenzo always griped about he talked to an opponent in a fight. Hey you're not so tough, I've had villagers hit harder than you. I recognize you from the bingo book Rayano, aka the mist's one fang dragon for your abilities in kenjutsu. Ebi class, I believe, but that last attack felt more like a genin swatting a training post on an empty stomach. The newly identified Rai fell for it hook line and sinker, roaring in frustration. Naruto easily weaves in and out at the close range ragged attacks that had a basic pattern. He was less adept than Yugo at the art and Naruto got in two other jabs, this time in the arms as he launched himself above using Rai's sword as a springboard. From what he remembered from the bingo book tournament that ANBU hosted every month the captain's way of keeping everyone up to date Rai was quick to anger and not very bright his only skill was brutal assaults and the hidden mist jutsu, not anything that required a lot of brain power. Rai looked confused as he felt his body going stiff, before not being able to move at all. Bingo Naruto says before a clone slices his throat from behind. Naruto goes through a few seals, releasing a Wind style, great breakthrough. The already weakening mist is blown away completely, allowing Hana her shot. Getsuga, even without her partner's her drill attack, hits the second one easily as a clone had sliced his hand before being expelled, and he was under the short term paralysis. The third one looked slightly nervous as he held the Uchiha. D don't come any closer or I'll slit his throat. I swear I'll do it. Let me go and I'll his eyes widen and he screams as a Chidori is slammed through his chest. A murderous looking Kakashi appears from behind, snatching his student away. Without a glance he's off to take Sasuke to the hospital. Several of the reserve and active ANBU surround Hana and her kill, while Dragon and Tenzo land in front of Naruto, who is winding down from the adrenaline. Mouse report Dragon commands, snapping Naruto back to the situation. After we relayed my clone's findings, it became clear that there were three missing from the group, when a kunai hit my shoulder here Naruto winced at the memory. A medic wordlessly healed the wound that was rapidly closing on its own. Hana prevented me from potential injury from an explosive note. The enemy, who were holding Sasuke Achiha hostage, created a mist and tried that silent killing thing Kakashi Senpai told me about after his wave mission anyway, Hana waited on the roof while I got both fighters the third hung back with kunai soaked in the paralyzing poison. It worked, and I was able to distract Rai from the poison until it took effect and killed him Hana got hers as well after I blew the mist away, while Kakashi Senpai took out the third member, taking Sasuke to the hospital, I believe. While that worked fine, I remember that strategy being a group effort, not a solo one, Mouse. If they had an immunity to the paralysis or were intelligent. Then we would have died. I know, Captain. But they were from water this variation I used is native to fire, and as such I took a gamble otherwise a full-on battle wouldn't have worked I would have had to resort to Kenjutsu, some ninjutsu, and shadow clones one Rai was better at and the other too weak on strategy or easy to dodge. Naruto tilted his head defiantly at his captain it was the best plan he could think of as Hana was on injury leave and Naruto wasn't fully equipped or with his team. Tenzo sighed after a moment and Dragon nodded. You did well, Mouse, even if you did rely on a huge gamble. We'll work on strategies at the next team dinner so you won't have to resort to such an iffy plan again, okay? Tenzo left after giving Naruto a final once over. Dragon chuckles a bit. He cares for you was frantic the entire run over here. You are on standard medical leave for two days be at HQ at 10 a.m. for personal training. I'll work with you until your meeting with the Hokage. And Dragon leaves to find where the mole was, leaving a trembling Naruto behind him. Dragon was a patient man, he liked to believe. But now was not the time to play the board with deliberation and waiting around 22 shinobi, all defectors from mist, staged a fake attack on the Hokage and bombed a few other buildings of note, all for the sake of stealing a high-value target, the last loyal Uchiha. Worse, they were headed towards Rice, where Jiraiya's spy network and his men reported a new hidden village, one that coveted missing ninja and bloodlines. Dragon knew he was not seeing something a final piece, 
as such a small village wouldn't normally attempt the ire of the strongest of the five. In exasperation he storms to the T and I, where one survivor was hanging on to life. One week after the attack. Sasuke Uchiha was many things, a genius, an avenger, an Uchiha. An avenging genius Uchiha's don't get captured by three missing ninja barely Chunin level, but he had. It was unacceptable. When he woke up in the hospital, Kakashi lazily read his book and informed him that ANBU had stopped him from being taken. Seething at his vulnerability, the last Uchiha demanded more training, more power than the team exercises and conditioning he had been limited to. Kakashi just I smiled, patted him on the head, and told him powerful jutsu weren't the answer, that the ANBU who took down the leader just used shadow clones, poison, and his C-rank jutsu. Sasuke scoffed at that and left the hospital to train on his own, spending his week off at the Uchiha training grounds. I need to get stronger to beat him. The brooding teen clenched his fist in his pockets in anger, not noticing his afternoon walk after another stagnant training session was taking him to a section of the village he'd never been in before, the part of town his sensei and every other higher-up ninja lived, bought food and hung out around. No civilians in most shinobi under Chunin level knew about it heck, Sasuke only knew about it because he lived with an ANBU for a month after the massacre, and no way a recently orphaned seven-year-old would live alone right away not when he no doubt had no way of knowing how to do simple things like cooking, cleaning, ECT. His thoughts lost in the past, Sasuke almost missed a certain blonde-haired dead last walking slowly through the streets, a limp in his step and blood splattered on his face. Almost is the key word. He's gotten stronger, I need that power. Heh, I have the Sharingan, I'll fight him and steal that power. A dead lass doesn't need it anyway, I bet he got an office job or hospital post those losers don't need power like an Avenger. Naruto was exhausted relieved, but exhausted. A simple escort of the daimyo from the capital to Kanoha turned almost deadly when a pack of seven missing ninja this time with mixed IWA and Kiri headbands had attacked the caravan holding the daimyo well, the decoy anyway. In reality Team Ro was escorting the daimyo's double while Gama and two other squads took the real daimyo of fire on an alternate route which wove underground at times. They defeated the bastards with only minor injuries by Naruto's standards anyway. Hikaru kept insisting Naruto be carried when he sprained his ankle in a roundhouse kick. When they returned to Kanoha with the bodies, the higher-ups congratulated them on their work, but everyone in Rogue got the impression they weren't happy none were taken alive it made proving their likely affiliation with the newly discovered Otogekure nigh impossible. That was almost a day ago, and Naruto was off until noon tomorrow. Until then, the exhausted ANBU had plans to secure his apartment, shower, and sleep with his newly made sound barrier seals and privacy seals months of work would pay off, as Guy's voice was not something one could learn to tune out. That was Naruto's plan, before the Uchiha he saved, not that he would ever know stopped him on the street. Fight me, idiot. Sasuke demanded arrogantly. Naruto looked the brat for Sasuke Uchiha was very much a brat in Naruto's eyes now and stared at him with tired eyes. No. He said simply and attempted to step around the older boy. HN, scared? You will fight me. Sasuke said and blocked his path again. Naruto sighed, wishing he had agreed to go get sushi with Hei 8 and Yuga now, or even the hot springs with Hikaru. He idly wondered if this was karma for slipping away from his comrades. Nah, not even karma is this cruel. I just got back from a mission, I'm tired and have no time for you leave. His voice was cold but Naruto didn't care, he had a, hopefully still hidden, ramen stash waiting for him and warm shower calling. Sasuke grinded his teeth. He didn't used to be this unhinged, but the last time he saw Naruto had showed him how far behind he was falling if a loser could overtake him. If you won't fight me willingly, I'll make you. Fire style, fire dragon jutsu. He snarled. Naruto's eyes widened slightly at this. Sasuke believed it was because he was impressed or scared, and smirked. No however, the real reason Naruto's eyes widened was his disbelief at Sasuke's stupidity. He replaces himself with a trash can from a nearby alley. You moron. Fighting between comrades in the village streets is prohibited. 
Naruto shouted in anger. The Sasuke he knew would never be so stupid, but when Naruto sought his eyes filled with lust for power he groaned, the reports of the Uchiha becoming a flight risk in his search to kill Itachi were not exaggerated. Sasuke prepares another attack, when he suddenly slumps down. Anko, Dango in hand, glares down at the boy in disgust. Foolish maggot. Naruto, you alright? She asks. Naruto nods. Yes he was no threat, but thanks. What should we do with him? Naruto asked. Normally a shinobi who pulled such a stunt would spend the night at tea and I'd a cool off, be interrogated, and then taken to the Hokage for punishment. With the Uchiha, though, it was likely nothing would happen. Anko snorted at Naruto's question. He'll get the same treatment as everyone else, the Hokage doesn't care if he is the last of his bloodline. Weren't you the one who told me the old geezer promised that the village comes before any individual isn't that what he told you during your talks? Naruto winced a bit at his own unsaid accusations he had patched things up with the Hokage completely when they had their heart to heart and Naruto made him wear orange all day and rubbed his hair sheepishly. Sorry, sorry, you're right. I'll leave him to you then. And Naruto takes off before Anko can yell an indignant hey. You should take him and slips into his apartment through the window. The next morning guy woke Naruto up at the normal 4am time, somehow by passing all of his seals again. Y-O-S-H. My youthful morning student. Let U.S. bask in our youth and discover what the springtime of youth has in store for U.S. today. We shall spend the morning together before your youthful shift starts. Guy shouted in Naruto's tiny room, his flailing arm almost knocking over the bookcase. Naruto blinked blearly. What did you say? He mumbled through his mask he never did get a shower as Anko showed up demanding Dango after he checked his traps and fed the plant, and thus was still wearing what he had on yesterday, making him seem more like Kakashi than ever. Oh. You're too hip and cool, mini Kakashi. Never fear, I shall show you the way back to youthfulness. Guy swung the still half-asleep Naruto over his shoulder. We shall take an ice-cold swim in the river before running around Kanoha on our hands. By the time Naruto fully awoke he was cursing Guy with his very soul as the water bit into his skin. Note to self, research better security seals. With that thought in mind Naruto begrudgingly swam the laps with the green monster, never noticing dragon observing from a nearby tree. I know what you're thinking, Mouse, but just like with your ramen, your house will never be safe from Guy. Your training with him is too amusing. Though perhaps I should have let you sleep in, seeing as your squad did just complete an A-rank escort mission, nah. Dragon continued muttering to himself as Naruto crawled out onto the bank and was given the leg and chest weights he wore while training with Guy. Grumbling curses the almost 13-year-old slid them on and started on his run six-hour run with Guy, who alternated between hands and feet. ANBU Locker Room, Noon Multiple ANBU squads were preparing for various missions and shifts when Naruto walked in with a twitching eyebrow and muttering. He he he. Just you wait, guy and mini guy. I will create a barrier you can't break through. And when I do, my mornings off will cease to be interrupted by ramblings of. Here Naruto shuddered. Youth. Tenzo, Yugo, and Hikaru winced in sympathy for their young friend the poor boy was Guy's new pet project that extended beyond training and into attempts to bring back Naruto's youth. It was really not a fate they wished on anyone. Unfortunately for Naruto the other squads found it hilarious. Haha <laughs> I am so glad you were suckered into that apartment and not me. Jaguar teased. He had moved in right after Naruto had, avoiding the curse that was Guy. Most of the other ANBU sniggered as the youngest among them muttered like a deluded old man about killing whoever taught Guy about seals. Of course, Ro all knew it was Dragon who just disabled them randomly for kicks. They would never tell Naruto, however, for fear of Dragon carrying out his threat of assigning them Kanoamaru duty for a month. Shut it! Captain Tiger, permission to sanction an assassination mission of whomever sells Guy his jumpsuits and taught him seals? Naruto asked hopefully. Tenzo sighed, 
familiar with this situation. Permission denied, Mouse. Besides, I think you'll like your mission we're preparing for tomorrow, or at least, you'll be doing the rest of us a favor Tenzo said. Naruto cocked his head. What kind of mission? Oh, just running the trap course for the academy today. Tenzo grinned evilly at the pale expression on Naruto's face, when Hawk who usually ran the course was called in on a mission, Tenzo had swiped it for his squad. Not only would Ro get to observe an unbearably easy watch from the shade of the trees, but Naruto would be able to see his teacher again in off-duty gear, too. Is this payback for making the Hokage wear orange? Naruto asked. Why, whatever made you think that? Tenzo asked. By his too innocent expression, however, Naruto knew his captain was a vengeful bastard when he wanted to be. Academy, next day. All right, class, remember to treat whomever is the instructor with respect. They'll teach you basic traps and how to disable them. Iruka was stern with the nine-year-olds, especially Kanoamaru and his friends. His pride as a teacher was on the line, and if his students misbehaved it would reflect poorly on him. They reached the clearing the new instructor wanted them at quickly and Iruka's jaw dropped. Standing in the middle of a sea of traps was his unreachable student, Naruto. The boy wore standard black pants and long black shirt, and the face mask he sported resembled a certain cyclops. What really got Iruka, though, was when Naruto turned to face them and plopped down, holding up ten flags. I don't believe in babying students and fine learning by doing is better than anything my traps teacher threw me in the deep end so I will do the same. I am your target I have ten flags on me one for every three students. Your job is to team up into three-man cells and make your way through the field to me, setting off as little traps as possible. You will be graded on how quickly and efficiently you get through. The winning squad will be treated to dinner by me at Ikaraku's that got the kids' attention. Irika's jaw dropped though at the cool tone of Naruto and the difficulty of the trap set. Go Naruto said after a moment and thirty students split off, preparing for their trial. Iruka used a shunshin and kawarimi to make it into Naruto's circle and sat next to his old student. Iruka sensei Naruto greeted happily. I didn't know you were teaching this class. Naruto sounded happy, and he was, but he was also nervous Iruka was known for being able to make Naruto talk about everything, not something Naruto wanted at this time when his ANBU status wasn't spread around. Hello, Naruto. I haven't seen you in almost five months. Where have you been? Iruka asked crossly. The Chunin was both ecstatic and pissed at his former student. Had special assignment and all that pretty boring most of the time. I was asked to take over for the ANBU today, so that's why this course isn't as detailed as I like Naruto apologized sheepishly. Iruka gaped at him flabbergasted that this monster of a test wasn't the final product and forgetting about Naruto's situation in the moment just like Naruto hoped for. What do you mean as detailed as you'd like? This is high genin level not meant for academy students. You can't expect nine-year-olds to succeed. Iruka ranted on to Naruto, who began tuning him out. Finally the Chunin ran out of breath. You done? Good. Listen, teamwork is more important than flashy jutsu or fancy taijutsu move. If I made it easy they wouldn't realize this, the way my course is set up they will have to work together to get a flag, while also figuring out how the most common and deadly traps work, even if these versions only shoot out paint. Naruto gave a cold stare, daring Iruka to argue. He'd seen the genin squads and their high mortality rate on missions when their teamwork and basic knowledge was lacking versus the ANBU squads whose teamwork saved both the ninja and the missions constantly. If being harsh now prevented even one gen in death, Naruto viewed this as a mission complete. Iruka looked at Naruto in pride. The boy he knew would have boasted about doing everything alone and screamed a battle cry, not lecture on the importance of working together and pushing oneself. It made him wonder what assignment Naruto had. A few squads had overheard Naruto and strove to work better together. With new determination, the students strove to win, not just for food, but also to make their temporary sensei proud. 
Up in the trees Hikaru and Yugo played go fish. Yo, think Chibikoai is really an old war vet in disguise? I mean, he sounds 30, not 12. Hikaru grumbled as he lost to Yugo who had their captain giving hand signs behind Hikaru feeling like his favorite squad mate was being dull. No, idiot mouse is just growing up, something you could learn from. Yugo admonished. She was proud of Naruto for his maturity as of late, she was no longer worried of having two Hikarus on row. What's so bad about being childish sometimes? We accepted this mission so Mouse can hang out with his old teacher not lecture. Tenzo sighed as the recent bickering topic started up. Stop it, both of you. Tenzo ordered. His brain couldn't handle another argument over Naruto's personality. Wolf, Mouse is on a mission an easy one, sure, but still a mission and as such as in the mission mode we taught him. At this Yugao looks smug. And Cat? Lighten up a bit. You are playing a card game on a mission right now, so any jibes on Wolf's maturity are moot at this point. Now it's Hikaru's turn to throw his shoulders back in victory. Tenzo palms his mask in exasperation as the two clearly didn't get it. Hey, what's up? Naruto's voice breaks Tenzo from his stupor. Naruto smirked. The kids are done, I'm just a clone. Boss is taking the winners to Wikirakus. Tenzo nodded. That's fine, Mouse. After you're done get some rest we have sewer patrol tonight. Everyone grimaced. Ever since their first time, Dragon took it upon himself to let Ro handle most of the sewer patrol as it became easier with Naruto's clones. Darn that dragon sadistic bastard. See you in a few hours and he poofed away. That night. This sucks Hikaru said as they made their way through the tunnels, not bothering to follow the silent unless necessary rule. Silently, Naruto agreed. He had twenty clones do a preliminary sweep but they still had to double-check everything. Shut it at least we only have the West Sector. We should be done within six hours. Yuga was in a foul mood. Her date with Hei 8 would have to be postponed as the sewer smell took hours to get out. It's not so bad. There isn't any. Naruto trailed off then cursed. Crap there's six hostels setting up explosives. They take off soundlessly, Naruto in the lead. No more complaints or bickers filled their thoughts with danger up ahead they became the elite ANBU of Kanoha. They reached the section of the tunnels the clone dispersed. Suppressing their chakra roll looked from the shadows. 6. Wearing scratched Kumo headbands. Tenzo signed. Recognized the one in the back Kumo Birink. Takashi the tank. Went rogue three months ago. Naruto signed back. He was well versed in the bingo books now, as he was determined to win the vacation passes for his squad at the next bingo book tournament. Understood. Mouse throw five of your new smoke tags on my signal cat, Wolf, kill the four in front. Mouse, capture the fifth working on the bomb tags. When finished, assist me with Takashi. Tenzo ordered. With nods, Naruto threw down the tags. What made these smoke tags so special was Naruto's little twist. Instead of storing actual smoke in the seal, he stored chakra smoke from his clones, making it similar to the hidden Miss Jutsu. After facing Rai, Naruto had asked Kakashi for the Jutsu. After trying it, it became clear that even with it being technically a D-ranked Jutsu, for Naruto to use it he'd have to develop a water affinity to perform it with any degree of effectiveness which Kakashi wouldn't teach him before his wind manipulation was complete still weeks away, even with clones. To make up for the lack, Naruto altered the standard smoke tag a bit. After accidentally sealing an annoying clone into the Matrix, Naruto set it off in frustration, only to grin maniacally when his apartment was filled with a thin smoke. Now, each tag held 20 clones worth of chakra smoke, which lingered longer and blocked sensors and smell, not just sight. Once the tags released a mountain of smoke Hikaru and Yugo took off, making the four in front fell, all of whom were genin level. Naruto went over near his target, who was frantically attempting to finish his seal but kept making mistakes. 
Dropping down behind, Naruto took a deep breath and tried out his new jutsu from Kakashi. Earth-style, headhunter jutsu. He whispered, screams of the enemy covering the noise, and sank into the ground. It wasn't perfect, but Naruto couldn't use destructive jutsu in close quarters or risk the man a short balding chunin with a sloppily slashed headband. Under the ground, Naruto's hands shoot out and grab the ankles. Pulling down with all his might the man lets out a startled yelp as he finds himself neck deep in earth. Naruto reappears behind him and knocks him out with the hilt of his new Chukoto. Opening the prisoner stasis scroll Naruto quickly seals the unconscious man in, silently grumbling that his last scroll was used prisoner stasis scrolls were expensive, and it took a level 4 to make. Die, Kanoa scum. A voice Naruto could only assume was Takishi rang out. Naruto turns to see his captain and teammates having little trouble with the hulk of the man. Takashi was powerful with his earth release, but Yugo had cut off one of his hands, making most jutsu impossible. Earth style, mud wave. Or not. Jumping up to the ceiling team row avoids the floor becoming a disgusting river of sewage and dirt. Yugo and Tenzo give a familiar hand sign and Naruto grins behind his mask, he loved this combo, even if it was insanely difficult. Naruto made three clones who shunshined in a triangle formation around Takashi. The man draws a kunai and slices toward one. At that moment Yugo switched with the clone and blocks the strike. While he's distracted with holding off her sword, Tenzo switched with the one of the left and stabbed the man with a wooden spike from his arm. Naruto then finished it behind them, his Chukoto laced in wind chakra to decapitate the man. The mud hard end, no longer fed by chakra, and squad row lands around the body. Good work Tenzo praised, slightly winded. He had engaged in a taijutsu match with the target, as at first neither wanted to damage the area, though for different reasons. HQ has already sent back up to disable any other threats. Mouse, are you able to dismantle this areas? Naruto studied the matrix on the wall carefully. It was obviously made to be let off domino style, and so he'd have to go dismantle them one at a time. It would take hours. I can, Captain. It will take hours, but I can do it. Tenzo nodded. Good, then we don't have to wait for anyone to come. Take care of this section, we'll guard you. With a sigh, Naruto started on the first tag, slowly unraveling the seal. It ended up taking half a day before Naruto finished the last glued-on tag only because three other sections had a domino-style chain as well. Finally done, Naruto rolled his shoulders and turned to his captain. Finished. Please tell me we are off duty now he begged. Tenzo shook his head. Sorry, but all Jonin and ANBU are to report to the war room for a debriefing the one you caught cracked. Naruto perked up a bit at that. Finally they had information. Ten minutes later Ro found their place on the ceiling, the room too full for the late arrivals. No one talked much, even Guy, kneeling next to Kakashi in the front row, barely whispered. We can now begin the Hokage breathed, and the already grim room went deathly quiet. Last night ANBU discovered another group of missing Nin, this time all from Kumo, setting up a chain of bombs in the underground sewers on a routine sweep. They killed five of the perpetrators, one of whom was a B-rank in our bingo books, and captured one. Ibiki and Inoichi uncovered their motive and origin. Most stiffened at what he said next. They were working for Odoge Cure, the budding village in Rice we've been searching for. It appears they were promised entrance to the village if they managed to collapse the western sector and then capture an unsealed by a Kogan or Sharingan user. Outrage from the Jonin filled the room. We should destroy them. How dare this startup try and take Kanoha? Silence. Sarutobi ordered. We cannot prove anything yet and we don't know who this new village has sided with. Furthermore, they have sent an official request to participate in the Chunin exams taking place in three months, I accepted. Hokage-sama, is that wise? Ebisu spoke. Naruto observed the stuck-up Jonin, familiar with him from a trivia night, the man was a walking textbook, but never thought outside the box. 
Case in point, he didn't see the reasoning of the Hokage's position. Yes, Ebisu, it is. This way we have them in a position that when for there is clearly no if they try something, we will be under full rights to crush them under the great tree of Kanoha. Furthermore, I have already decided that teams 7 and 8 will be required to be in the exams. Kakashi nodded at his leader, but Karinai was indignant. Okage-sama. You plan to use Hinata as bait? She's not ready. Karinai argued. In truth, before today she would have loved to have Hinata in the exams to toughen her up, but not now. She is a kunoichi, as are you my word is final. Besides, both she and Sasuke will have an ANBU to guard them the entirety of the exams, regardless if they make the finals. Whispers went around, as having ANBU guarding a particular person bordered on messing with the exam. Kakashi spoke up. Who will be watching our genin, Hokage-sama? Squads Falcon and Beta will be watching over Hinata Hyuga, while Team Ro and Gama, under the guise of normal exam patrols, will be with Sasuke Uchiha said squads Gama and Ro all cursed in their minds. None of them liked the Yachiha after hearing of his attempted assault and being told to guard him for over a month was not their idea of fun. Kakashi seemed to sense their displeasure and sent an eye smile up towards the ceiling. If I may, would it be possible to commission an ANBU to help train each gen and squad? It would help prepare them for the trials ahead. Naruto's stomach started dropping hoping his senpai wasn't doing what he thought he was doing. Very well then, anyone in particular you'd like to request from the guard detail? Oh, I think Miles would be wonderful. Kakashi I smiled as Hikaru held Naruto's shoulder to prevent him from attacking the Cyclops and Wolf as well. Now it was Yugo holding Hikaru back, and Naruto tossed a wind-charged kunai right at Kakashi's head, who caught it easily. Everyone not in the know yet about Sasuke's sweat dropped at the violent reaction. Ma, ma, mouse. If you and Wolf work with my genin every Tuesday and Thursday, I'll show you the first step to water manipulation. Naruto stopped reaching for another kunai. And? He questioned. Saratobi could have ordered him to do it for free, but found the situation amusing that, and it made Kakashi spend more time away from the memorial stone. Hikaru, meanwhile, looked betrayed at his kohai, who was selling them out. I'll buy you a ramen buffet. Kakashi managed, mentally crying for his wallet. Naruto hummed. Good, but not good enough after he attacked me and no doubt will try to use his Sharingan on me every chance he gets. You know what I want? No. Anything but that. Nope. Besides, cats are better. I should disown you for that. You never adopted me. Accept and let me pick it out, or I'll spend the three months showing them my sexy jutsu. Fine. We'll go pick you out a cat after this. Kakashi growled out. His little mini-me project was failing. Most chuckled at how the twelve-year-old just got Kanoha's resident cat hater to spend a fortune on a cat. Excellent. Pleasure doing business with you. Naruto cheered. Hikaru was still gaping. Moving on we will discuss the increased patrol and preparations. I fear we may have to fend off a coordinated attack soon. Shikaku, your analysis? Seven hours later the Hokage dismissed them, and Naruto, despite his lack of sleep, was waiting for Kakashi. The height-challenged ANBU locked onto Kakashi, pinning the man with clones. Oh senpai, you weren't going to leave without me, right? He he. I would never. Let's go find you a pet dog. Cat. Dog. Cat. Please, anything but cats. Nope, I like cats. Tora and I are best of friends. Everyone, even Saratobi and Danzo, paled a bit at the thought of the Jinchuriki and Tora getting along. At least look at the other animals? Kakashi begged, pulling out his orange book. Naruto had crawled up to his shoulders and pulled out a book on training cats. Fine. Kakashi did a mental victory sign. But I'll still choose a cat. Dog. Cat. Dog. Cat. 
The two made their way out of the war room, neither caring for the scene they caused.